all right you're probably not going to believe this but this is true so the a jezebel female pastor from bethel church is a charismatic house full of devils essentially uh from bethel church claims that jesus gave her the key to time travel you know when the bible talks about observing times you know observer of times in uh deuteronomy chapter 18 let me just make sure i got the scripture reference deuteronomy chapter 18 verse number 10 to 12 let me just show you the scripture uh, there shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that uses divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. You know, observing times, time travel. So he claims that Jesus Christ, this spirit, de you know, deity, this supposed deity, uh, who, who she, you know, her deity, the god of this world, Satan. Jesus Christ, you know, the false Jesus Christ of the charismatic movement. I'll put it that way, because Jesus Christ did warn about false Christs in Matthew chapter 24. And the Apostle Paul talked about those who preach another Jesus in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. Uh, this spirit that she claims is Jesus Christ gave her the key to time travel. You know, so she's observing times then, basically. I'm going to show you the article, I'm not making this up. Uh, and again, I'm not, I don't I, I don't deny that that a, a entity calling itself Jesus Christ gave her this supposed key to time travel because you know devils they work in mysterious ways and devils they can come to you as an angel of light. I mean, Second Corinthians chapter eleven verse fifteen says that even Satan himself comes as an angel of light. He appears as an angel of light, and Satan's ministers appears as ministers of righteousness in verse, uh, sorry, that was verse 14, Satan comes as an angel of light. Verse 15, his ministers appear as the ministers of righteousness. And Revelation chapter 2, verse 2, says we can try those who claim they're apostles and find them to be liars. And 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, says to try the spirits whether they be of God. So it's kind of obvious that she didn't, this pastor, female pastor, didn't try the spirits. And you read all the appearances of Jesus Christ in his glorified body, and one example is in Daniel chapter 10. Let me just show you that from the scriptures. Daniel chapter 10, uh, verses 5 to 12. You'll see a consistent theme of how people react to the appearances of Jesus Christ to them. Daniel chapter 10, verses 5 to 12. Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphaz. His body was, was like the barrel and his face as the appearance of lightning and his eyes as lamps of fire and his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude and I Daniel alone saw the vision uh, for the men that were with me saw not the vision but a great quaking fell upon them so they fled to hide themselves so that they fled to hide themselves Therefore I was left alone, and saw this great vision, and there remained no strength in me, for my comeliness was turned into turned in me into corruption, and I retained no strength. And yet I heard the voice of his words, and when I heard the voice of his words, then was I in a deep sleep on my face, and my face toward the ground. Notice that face toward the ground. And behold, a hand touched me, which was set upon my knees, and upon my palms of my upon the palms of my hand. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this uh, this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for the, from the first day thou didst set, set thine heart to understand, and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. Okay? Daniel there saw Jesus Christ in his glorified body. How do we know? Compare this with Paul. Compare this with his vision of Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 9, verses 1 to 9. You'll see a consistent theme of them falling on their face dead. Uh, Acts chapter 9 verses 1 to 9 And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest, and desired of him letters to Damascus and to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they be men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shone, shined round about him a light from heaven. 
And he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And uh, and trembling, and he and he trembling was and astonished, said, Lord, will uh, what wilt thou have me do to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go to the city, and that it shall be actually it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were open, he saw no man, but they led him by hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days, he was three days without sight, and neither did he neither did eat nor drink. So you have a consistent theme. The person who Jesus Christ is speaking to, he only he can see or hear the voice, but the men around them who are with him, they can hear something, but they can't see or hear who it is, and they're afraid. And then the person, you know, Saul here, Paul, who's later named Paul, falls down dead, fell down on his face dead. So whenever they see Jesus Christ in his glorified body, they fall down on their face dead. Okay, let's go to the, uh, Revelation chapter uh, 1, verses 10 to 18. And when I was I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and thou was and what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto the Theatria, hope I'm saying that right, and unto Sardius, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and, and being turned, I saw seven go golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden griddle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, his eyes were as a flame of fire. His feet and his feet were alike unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice was as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth uh, went, went a, two, a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. Uh, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, for I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and beholdeth, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Okay? Every time somebody saw Jesus Christ in his glorified body, they fell down dead. Daniel in Daniel chapter ten verses five to twelve, Paul in Acts chapter nine verses Acts chapter nine verses one to nine, and uh, the Apostle John in Revelation chapter one verses ten to eighteen. But you don't see that with this supposed, you know, Jesus who gave this uh, Jezebel charismatic uh, pastor this supposedly key to time travel. Where in scripture does it say that Jesus Christ has keys to time travel? You read in Revelation 1 that he has the keys of hell and of death. He has the keys to hell and the keys to death. But where does he have the keys to time travel? You know, can I get a chapter and verse on that? Book chapter and verse, please. It's not in there. But I'm going to read this article from Protestia.org. Uh, quote, unquote, Jesus gives schiz schizophrenic Bethel pastor keys to time travel. And this is her right there. Funny little image there, but um, Jenna Whitson, the Pastrix, hmm, kind of like Matrix with the, you know, Romanism thing, with Mary being the Matrix. Just funny little comparison. At Bethel Church in Redding, California, and also the proprietor of the Heartscaping Ministry, her testimony is that she was di is a diagnosed schizophrenic who spent the first forty years of her life going through psych wards and holds. Uh, quote, multiple abuses and mental illnesses, diagnoses, extreme drug addictions, and has multiple had multiple suicide attempts. All before winding up at a faith-based recovery organization where she claims uh, to have a radical encounter with Jesus that, quote, forever changed the, tra the trajectory of her life. Well, she had an encounter with a spirit entity calling itself Jesus Christ, but it wasn't Jesus Christ in the Bible, because guess what? She didn't fall down dead before this entity that was calling itself Jesus Christ. It wasn't Jesus Christ. It was a devil coming as an angel of light, appearing as an angel of light. Uh, this encounter resulted in her being healed of her mental illness, psychosis, and suicide, or has it, consisted of, of her incense that Jesus uh, cozied up next to her in her bed, playing with her hair. That's disgusting. 
I mean, Jesus Christ would never do something like that. This is a, this is a perverted devil spirit, running his fingers through it, his fingertips lightly uh, scraping her scalp, and whispered sweet deliverances. Oh, I mean, really, these, these charismatics are just devil possessed to the core. It's disgusting. Uh, freeing her from her demons. Okay, the scriptural word is, is devils, not demons, but I thought I'd point that out. Uh, but of course, charismatics, they don't hold the scripture, they hold their experiences over scripture. She called herself a seer prophet and does counseling through her heartscape ministry, quote, specializing in inner healing, prophetic deliverance. Okay, inner healing is totally witchcraft related. I There's, there's literally an inner healing, inner healing shop just down the street from my house. It's a witchcraft shop. It's not scriptural at all. Inner healing, prophetic deliverance, identifying and cultivating your spiritual gifts, and restoring your full identity. One uh, distinctive is that unlike most people uh, shilling their wares, hers are unusually upscale terms, uh, upscale in terms of their price. I, with the typical course video being one hundred and twenty nine dollars. Love of money is the root of all evil. First Timothy six verse ten. Sorry, it's got something in my eye there. Yeah, love of money is the root of all evil. Again, First Timothy chapter six verse ten. Uh, last month she spouted a wee bit on a wee bit of open theism heresy, explaining how God doesn't know the future. Open theism is blasphemy, by the way. It's just utter pure blasphemy. Um, God does know the future. Okay, you read in uh, the book of John. I believe it's. Uh, let me just go to the scripture real quick. Let me just make sure I have the right reference. John, cha I believe it's John chapter thirteen. Uh, I think it's. Here it is. John 13, 21. That was the verse I was looking for. John chapter 13, verse 21. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. Okay. Jesus Christ knew that Judas was going to betray him. So he knew the future full well. He, he didn't like, it wasn't just some good guesses or whatever. It's, it's ridiculous. He knew that Judas was going to betray him. He knew that Peter was going to deny him three different times. It's ridiculous. Jesus Christ does know the future. He is God. Uh, this week, she's claiming that a bunch of angels and, you know, the devil, they claim it's Jesus Christ, but they correctly say it's the devil, uh, gave her the keys, uh, the time travel back into people's generational lines to scoop up any blessings and gifts, the gift things that were left behind by a dear old granddad and great, 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 great aunt Betty. Yeah, sure. She says, a couple of years ago, because I do see angels every day. Well, she does see angels, definitely, but they're fallen angels. That's the angels she sees. So I do agree, she does see angels, but they're fallen. A couple of years ago, because I do see angels every day, but when it when it's for me, an encounter for me, there's obviously a different feeling and whatever to it. An angel drops and says, oh, hello, that type of thing, and was holding a key up like this. And and then it had a ring with the keys, it had three keys hanging. Uh, you know, the other ones were very personal to me. But when it got when it got to the last key, it was telling me that each key was all of a sudden all these other angels showed up. Yeah, all these other devils showed up. All these other fallen angels showed up. I never heard the term angels of harvest. Yeah, because it's not in scripture. You know, where's that in scripture? But of course, charismatics they go by their experiences over the word of God. You know, they hold their their experiences their traditions of men above the commandments of God, above the Holy Scriptures, like Jesus rebuked in Matthew chapter 15, verses 1 to 9. And all of a sudden, Jesus is there, and Jesus proceeds to tell me, I was being given the authority to send the angels of the harvest to go back through people's generational lines and pick up any blessings, uh, mantles, giftings, and call them anything that was unused in the spirit. The devil possession like crazy. Uh, then she says, Irk, what, 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 the what now? Uh, well, well, months and months went by, and actually I wasn't, uh, and she goes down there, it's like, uh, she says, I, so she says, I prayed this for weeks, and I was getting messages from people like, I just got inheritance in the mail, or check in the mail, I just got this, or I just got that. Then I think uh, it was months, and later, I later did it again, and I think I only ever did it once, or maybe three or four times, but every time, I just kept hearing the whole time, we were talking uh, the Lord's like, uh, I want you to do this, and I never, and I've never done it uh, over online platforms. And she goes down there; it's ridiculous. But uh, it's it's just crazy how 
these these people actually believe her. Some of these people. I mean, I'm not saying this website. This website is actually, you know, obviously condemning her, Prodestia. But some people actually follow her and think she actually has the gifts, the keys of time travel. Okay, first of all, uh, first of all, the, the spiritual gifts were for the Jews. Okay, the gifts, the sign gifts were for the Jews. Read Deuteronomy chapter four, verse thirty-four. Exodus chapter four, verses twenty-eight to thirty-one. Uh, uh, Acts chapter two, verses sixteen to twenty-one. Joel chapter two, verses twenty-eight to thirty-one or thirty-two. Uh, 1 Corinthians 1 22, 1 Corinthians 14 22. I could just go on and on and on. Sign gifts are for the Jews. Okay, they're not for Gentile Christians. They've done, they've, they are, have now ceased. Okay, but secondly, where is one of the sign gifts? Where in scripture was one of the sign gifts time travel? And where are the angels of harvest? Where is that in scripture? It's not in there. It's blatantly uh, against the word of God. These charismatic, devil possessed Jezebels have set aside the commandment of God for their tradition. And so, funny how it's always women, too. It's, it's just funny how it's always, always women that get these supposed revelations. And yeah, I am kind of fired up because she's leading people astray. Let me show you two more scriptures that kind of just close this off that are kind of relevant to the situation. 1 Kings chapter 9, verse number 22. Uh. I think it was First Kings. Maybe I think it was. Sorry, I think it was Second Kings. I do apologize. Second Kings chapter nine. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, Second Kings chapter nine, verse number twenty-two. Good thing that describes. Good scripture that describes a lot of these uh, Jezebel charismatics. These these charismatic Jezebel witches, like this woman here. First King, Second Kings chapter nine, verse number twenty-two. And it came to pass, when Joram saw Jehu, he said, "Is this?" Is it peace, Jehu? And he answered, What peace? So long as that as the whoredoms of thy mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many. Hmm. Witchcrafts of Jezebel. Interesting. Uh, Revelation chapter two verses I think it's verse uh, twenty to uh, twenty two. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication, and to eat of things, eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, uh, and them that commit adultery with her, into great tribulation, except that except they repent of their deeds. Okay. Very good two, two scriptures that describe these wicked, charismatic Jezebel witches who claim they get these revelations from Jesus Christ, but really they're from devil spirits who come as an angel of light, like it warns about in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. So don't be deceived by this wicked, charismatic movement. It is satanic. It is wicked. It is demonic. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.